Avacodis, we continue to perform the exploratory data analysis on the Titanic dataset, and in this lesson, we are focusing on the categorical features. So I've already walked through this code in the previous lesson, and it is a must-see prerequisite for this lesson. So what I will do, I'll just run all these cells, and I'll display the first five records of our dataset, just to remind ourselves how it looks like. So it is the original data set without any manipulations done yet. And so because in this lesson we're going to work with categorical features, let's drop all the continuous features. That will sort of clear the space for us so we can dive into the subject without anything getting in the way. And in addition to the continuous features, let's also drop the name it doesn't really influence the chances to survive, and it's there purely for passenger identification. So in cont features, I will list all those continuous features we want to drop, and I will also add name to this list as well. So we're going to drop passenger ID, B class, name, age, CBSP, Got the quotes, patch, and fair. All right, so this is our list. Just gonna finish it off. So we want to get rid of those features. In particular, we want to drop them. So we're gonna be using method pandas method drop on train df. That will be getting this list of cont features as an argument. And we would also want to specify that we are getting rid of columns, not rows. So therefore, we want to specify another parameter called axis. So axis equals one. And we also want our changes to be in place so that the changes will take place in the current data frame. It will not create a new data frame for us. And we would also want to peek at the result. That will produce a data frame with just the categorical features and we also have our target feature survived very well so now first of all we would want to explore our data from what's called high above so we're going to be utilizing a method called info to provide us with a simple statistics and it is as simple as train df.info. So it will produce a result such as it will tell us how many non null entries we have in our features and also what is their type. So you see, survived has a numeric type, while others do have object as their type. And we can also observe that cabin and embarked have less non null entries than the others. And we need to check whether the absence is systematic or they're just missing at random, same as we did with the age in the previous lesson. So we're going to utilize the group by method once again, and we will group by the cabin and we want to see the relationship between having or not having the record about the cabin and the survived feature. So this will generally split our values into two groups. One is where cabin was missing and the other where cabin was not missing. And we'll chain the mean to this construction as well. This will generate the average survived value for these two groups. And as you see, false is where cabin was not missing and true is where cabin was missing. This tells us that those who didn't have a cabin number assigned to their name had less chances to survive. And this also tells us that the cabin number is not missing at random. Therefore, cabin feature might be a good indicator of whether the person will survive or not. But we don't really care about the cabin number itself. We only care about whether the record was present or not. Therefore, we can transform our categorical feature cabin into a binary feature, where zero would mean that there is no record about the cabin and one is the opposite. And we can call it something like 
cabin, uh, let's say not ID, but cabin indicator. I think that will be fair. And we're going to be using where method from NumPy. If you're not sure how NumPy works, I have a beautiful lesson on NumPy on this channel. So it will check some sort of a condition. So we're going to pass something like train df cabin is null. So if the cabin was null, then it will return true and false otherwise. So basically we'll assign zero to the true and false will be assigned with one. In other words, zero if there is no record and one if there is a record. And then let's visualize our data frame with the new column. So 10 first records. And as you can see at the very right, we have cabin indicator indicating whether a passenger had a cabin on their record or not. All right, and what we can do now, we can plot our categorical features. In essence, we want to plot them to try and spot any sort of relationship between our categorical features and our target features, which is survived. Pretty much the same as we did with the continuous features in the previous lesson. And we'll even reutilize the code from the previous lesson. So I'm just going to copy and paste it in the next cell. We'll have three categorical features, which is this cabin indicator, sex and embarked. And we use the cat plot from Seaborn library to plot three distinct plots. And it is always a good idea to look at your data from different perspectives. So the relationship between cabin indicator and target feature survived is pretty obvious. So the higher survival rate among those who had cabin against those who did not have one. The second plot illustrates the sex feature. Bear in mind that Titanic sank in 1912 and back then there was only two sexes. And as you can see on this plot, women were more likely to survive than men. And the last plot illustrates the relationship between the survived feature and the city of embarkation. So we have Southampton, UK, Sherbrooke, France, and Queenstown. Nowadays it's COP, the Republic of Ireland. And it is unlikely that they have a direct relationship to the survived feature, unlike the sex feature and cabin indicator. More likely there were other features influencing the embarked feature and its relationship to the survived feature. For example, there could have been more men boarding in Southampton or there are more first-class passengers boarding in Cherbourg. So we need to dig a little bit deeper. And the tool we can pull out from our toolbox to help us is called the pivot table. They can help us to establish whether there is a relationship between the different variables. So we will pass several arguments to the parameters of this pivot table pandas. So survived is the column or the feature we'll look at. The row indices will be taken from the sex column and columns indices will be taken from the embarked column. And lastly, we'll need to specify the aggregation function, which is mean by default. So we need to change it to count because we are mostly interested in the distribution of where people boarded according to their gender. And here, indeed, you can see that twice more men boarded in Southampton, that is compared to women. And since we know that men were less likely to survive than women, this could explain why Southampton has such a low survival rate. But for Sherbrooke and Queenstown, the female-male ratio is pretty even. Now let's do the same, but for the cabin indicator. This time we'll check the hypothesis that perhaps people boarding in Cherbourg had bigger cabin allocation than those who were boarding in Southampton or Queenstown. So what I will do, I will literally copy over that code and I will change index from sex to cabin indicator. So we are getting a different distribution, but based on the same data. So we could possibly confirm or reject our hypothesis. And as you can see for Queenstown and Southampton, 
there are more people, much more people without cabin than those with the cabin. And since we know that cabin allocation increases the chances of a passenger to survive, we can infer that a lower survival rate for Queenstown and Southampton could be explained by the fact that more men were boarding the ship in these towns and not a lot of them have had a cabin. With that said, it is confirmed that the cabin indicator and sex have a strong correlation with survival. Now let's finalize this lesson by doing some cleaning of the categorical features. And I want to raise your awareness by showing you some notebook mechanics. So let's say we decided to drop some unnecessary categorical features, like those that does not influence anything. And they are pretty much redundant. Examples of those features are the name and the ticket. We don't need the ticket number itself because we only are interested in the information about the ticket class. And this information is stored in P class column and we want to drop it, but we've already dropped the name. So if we'll try to perform an in place drop with something that we've already dropped, we're going to get into an error. So it will not bypass the name and get to the ticket. And similar, it hasn't dropped the ticket. So make sure you are consistent with your steps. So to make it work and drop the ticket, we actually need to get rid of that name. So let me copy over that train DF head to illustrate what I mean. We should see a data frame where name is absent, but the column ticket is still present. And this generally explains why it is a good idea to run the head method in a separate cell to the one where I perform the in-place operation. So now let me get rid of that name from the list. Delete that and let's drop the ticket and display the data frame at the same time. Now you see no name and no ticket. And the next trick we want to perform is called the binarization of a categorical feature. You see, the model would not really know what male or female is, and it would not really care whether it is male, female, man, woman, or boys and girls. All it cares is that we have a variable that can only take two values. And because some models might have difficulties handling non-numeric categorical data, it might be a good idea to convert male and female to zeros and ones. And so once we've created this dictionary, we can use the map method on our sex column to map all male values to zero and all female values to one. So train df, then sex column, and dot map, and we are passing the binary gender as an argument. And of course, we'll need to store the result somewhere. We don't want to create additional column, therefore we will perform an operation similar to the in place. Basically, we're gonna store the result of this mapping in the column sex. Python is flexible enough to allow us to do so. So after we complete this code and run the cell, we'll display the modified data frame. And we'll do this, of course, with train df.hat. And our column sex should contain zeros and ones now. Indeed, it does. And there are two more redundant features that we can drop from this data set. Since we established that as long as you have a cabin, you have greater chances to survive. The cabin number doesn't play a significant role. Only the fact of the allocation matters. The embarked feature, on the other hand, does not have a causal relationship with the survived feature. Yes, you might be less likely to survive if you have boarded the ship at the Southampton port, but this is not because you've boarded the ship as a Southampton port, but because you're most likely to be a male and without a cabin allocation. And since gender or sex and cabin allocation are already captured by other features, we can drop both cabin and embarked. 
And this is our curated data set. But this is not the actual data set we're going to be working with, or not the shape of the data set. This is just the training example. However, now you know how to deal with the categorical features, redundant features, how to convert them into the binary values, and other interesting stuff. In the next lesson, we're going to be building on this new knowledge. Meantime, please give this video Empress thumbs up, toll the bell, and subscribe. That was V, and I'll see you in the next lesson. Cheerio. Thank you.